Oops, left this off the list. Solder. You need solder. How else are you going to solder? Hmm. So, if you can find this bloke or people, or whoever they are, I don't remember, I think I was shopping on eBay, look for solder, and these people came up, and I just bought a meter at about $11. So that was handy. Um, so anyway, <laughs> hope you haven't rushed out and bought the ingredients for this yet. Oops, got to go back and get solder. No. So I'm just going to measure it out at 66.5. <laughs> Just to um, not annoy anyone superstitious. Now I might just zoom in a bit here. Where are we? It's sharp here, it's a bit weathered, so make sure it works. I'm gonna find the 66.5, well, because this millimeter goes, uh, this roller goes in a half mil down this end. More. And once I find, excuse me if my head's in the way, right there, and come down here to this end, and we'll give it a little mark. Now my mark is off the edge of the roller, and I get it to just come right up to the mark. Let's see if we can hold things still and show you. So my mark is just to the left of the ruler. And that's where I've got to cut right along that black line and don't touch the silver side on the other side. Um, as in cut this side through the black line and it'll be perfect there. But I'm gonna leave a little bit of black line and file it down so it's nice and flush because cuts aren't always nice and neat. Our saw comes in handy. So just hang this over here. Use it that way. Start my mark very gently. Anyway, that's straight as I need it. So now I'm going to hold it like that. Getting ahead of myself, getting my own rolls. Trying to show you everything's useful. This is where we need to get a bit of wax. Just run the blade through it, not too hard. Just enough to coat the blade. Nicely. Yeah. Let's see if I can do it this way. I need to straighten this out a bit more. Okay, so I hang that over the edge, find my mark, cut straight. <laughs> didn't take long. <sighs> oh my neck. So anyway, human clamp, maybe it's easier to find a clamp. Add that to your list now. That's for you, not me. So we're gonna measure, that's beautifully on 65.5. So I'm just gonna neaten this edge just a touch. Wasn't too badly cut. And we'll grab our file. This is where I'll get it on a straight, point it straight up and down.
Do a bit of that side. Beautiful. Just to show you. 65.5. So, theoretically, we now should have what will become a size S9 ring. Now, we don't want to bend this without annealing. So, unplug the phone. Take this over here. Uh, so here's all right, a couple more things as I said I was going to mention when I get over here. Start with this. One of these hand pieces. Um, it's just a standard, it's not a super, you know, it's not oxy acetylene or anything, it's just a little gas torch. With a, obviously a hose you will need. Uh, the tips, this one's not too bad, it's not huge, but I'd like, I had one, but it's a bit blocked and I can't get it clean. It's just too far gone. Um, very thin, small one. Produces a smaller flame for more direct heat on one spot, but a lot of it enough to heat that spot. Um, that's important when you don't want to uh, yeah, get rid of those. I want to see them again. <laughs> um, so yeah, handpiece. These here are a kind of a very soft brick. I think we're out of kilns. I kind of picked up along the way. I'm not sure where you get them from, but you look online and find them. This here is just Hebel block. Uh, five, six bucks from here in Australia, Bunnings. Um, I think you just use them for making gardens, but it's a nice light. It can take the heat, so I can, I can use that. But this is good if you need to sort of push in a bit because these are nice and soft and yeah, sometimes you need stability. But these are good just for sitting things on. So actually I might even skip those and just go with the Hebel block six buck version of this just to show this is good enough. So I'm going to grab the uh, solder. And we need uh, a little flux solder. Sorry about that. So, just grabbing everything we need. So, a couple of these, not to um, clean ourselves. Something to put the solder on with. Solder, flux. Um, over here is just the pickle solution I have mixed up. It's just in a glass crock pot type thing. Um, nothing fancy. Um, if you can get something that heats up like an actual heat crock pot, like I use for the uh, sugar solution when I was treating, something like that would be good. Um, but not necessary, it just means heat reacts quicker. You just gotta leave it in longer if it's cold. I like to leave mine in the sun if it's shining because that gets pretty warm. Anyway, um, we're just gonna anneal this, which means we're gonna now go, all right, as I think I mentioned in another video, it's been pulled through a half round hole, stretched. So how evenly spaced the molecules in this are, they're irregular. So what we're gonna do is apply some heat Here's another thing, sorry, cigarette lighter or something to, uh, you know, spark your flame with. So we're going to apply some heat to this. Annealing it means just bring it to a dull red, like not a bright red or anything. You don't need it glowing. Um, and that relaxes all the molecules and evenly spaces the molecules all the way throughout. So then when you go to bend, it's going to bunch up in the middle, stretch the outside. So then you might want to anneal it a bit more. But if you can get it all around in one hit, depending on the thickness, if you can get it all the way around in one hit, so be it. 
Um, just be careful you don't start splitting the outside on thicker stuff when you stretch it too much. Once you bunch up the inside, stretch out the outside, you anneal it again, and then that'll rearrange those molecules in that new shape and relax the molecules even again. Then you can bend it some more without it bunching up more. It's now just bunching up again. That's how that's that's all I can explain on the, the nature of this. Also, I'm not industry. I've never done a full course. I've joined a local club. They've taught me some things, and I'm off and running. I'm doing my own thing. So you can tell me it's not how it's done. Some people may disagree with what I may have said. I don't know. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But some of this is just the uh, how can you put it? Um, how how I do things. That's all I'm saying. So actually, what I'm going to do. Just give this a smear of um, flux just to coat it. Now what that does is sometimes you can heat the metal up by accident, leaving the heat on too long, and you'll get a blackened effect. That's called fire scale. Sorry if I made noise then. Fire scale. Fire scale, you just can't polish out. You've got to really file it down to get it out because it's in that surface layer. And there's, there's virtually nothing to get it out. I've managed sometimes when it looks like fire scale to dip it in flux, reheat it, and it cleans it back up. But we'll go with this. So flame on. Make sure we've got our gas on. Only a quarter turn for safety, just in case we need to turn it off quick. At the gas bottle, that is. So now I'm just going to heat this up, going from one end to the other. And when I can see it getting to a... Oh, I should have turned the light off. That way you could see it. Um, when it gets to a dull red, not glowing red, that's it. You may even see this piece relax a bit and sink. So here it comes. And I can see it there, that's enough. I don't need that glowing. Um, so that's where we get these, pick it up. And something you didn't see in the other video. Just down here, a little bit of water, quenched. Once you do that, totally safe to handle. And that's nice and ready to bend, and that'll be really soft compared to how hard it was before. So, back over here. Drop out a light. Sorry about that. And I'm gonna grab these half rounds. And what we wanna do is bend this end here around and this one around, not in a perfect ring, it doesn't matter right now. We need this end and that end to point directly straight at each other. Because if they like that or like that, you'll get a wedge shaped gap. You just can't fill with solder. That way, that's not what solder will do. So the tighter the finish, uh, the, the gap, the, the better and aligned. Once it's there, it's there for good. So before this unanneals, we'll start curving that end right in. And we'll curve this end using the round on the inside, the flat on the outside. So we'll start down there a bit. And again, bending them sharply. And then I'll come around here and start getting them to somehow hopefully meet up. Flip it around. So now they've got to come way down more to meet. So we bend it right in. Right. Right down. There we go. So they're like that. And now we've got to align them properly. So they're a little bit too far down and misalign. So first thing is, bend that back across. Oops, off camera. I might just go back this way. So yeah, I've just aligned them by pushing that way a bit. And we can see the gap is way off center. Oops. Let's switch. So these pliers, so we're grabbing it from the side. And 
just bending it where it needs to to get those two faces to even up. Where I bent it, it's a bit bent out of shape. There we go. So that gets even now. Now I'm just going to get it to close up. Um, I don't like doing it, but I'm going to have to. It's a bigger ring. I'm going to use these just to give it a bit of a squish. Now it's not going to close it because it wants to spring back. So what I'm going to do now is just anneal it again. Now I've bent it all like that. It's very hard on the inside, no flex. So I'm just gonna, yeah, I'll, I'll fast forward some of this, that way you can see it. It's all in one hit on this video. I don't really wanna hit pause it at all. Um, so I'll just fast forward whatever and keep this short. All right, so now I can grab it right here in the middle. Oops, sorry right here in the middle and then push that way and that way. I'm gonna put it down here, and just use a bit of force to roll it. And a little bit down, so I'm gonna to have to bring them back up. still and then do that again and there you can see the join has really tightly closed up yeah I'll see if I can zoom in a bit nice tight join it's a little bit twisted so it's not too bad but Grab these and just twist it that way a bit. There we go. Shuffle it back over. So, oops, off camera. It's in line there, edge to edge. It's flush across the top. Just touch up more. So there we go, nice tight join, nice and flush. Not much solder's gonna flow in there, but once it does, that shouldn't come apart. Now we're gonna use hard solder. Um, hard solder just means uh, it's like a stronger, um, more heat required to um, to melt it, to, to get it to flow. So you can get this in uh, medium and soft as well. That means they've just got lower heat temperature. That way if you've soldered something and your risk is that you melt that solder, getting that solder in, you use a lower melting point medium and that should melt and take before the heat gets hot enough for that to melt and undo. Later a lesson for that one maybe. Anyway, got here some pre-cut bits, solder. So again, Dip him in the uh, flux. Oops. Nice coat on it. Drop it down there, it's good enough. And just gonna, I'm gonna burn it off this way first. Um, my preference bubbling effect knocks the solder around too much and as you can see it's leaving a crusty layer over the outside once this all cleans up nice and whitish um, all the flux is in place now the flux will burn off before the silver gets too hot to melt so once the flux is done stop melting uh, stop heating that way you don't risk to melt it Solder's gonna melt before the ring wheel. So when the solder's done, don't keep heating. 
just a couple of little things in, in the order of temperatures you, you sort of got this little balance of what can be done if I do it in this order all that sort of thing so now it's just a simple case of I dip this in here just to get a little spot of uh, flux on there to make some of this stick I'll put that one right there right across the joint at the top solder placement's important because it can leave a solder mark where it lay um, so I'll put that one there and I'm going to get ready to add another one because I think these are a little bit small these bits and that gap I want to fill properly so now it's just a case of repeat with the heat now you're going to heat the whole ring evenly silver seems to steal heat is the way it was explained to me which means if you heat this side over here up it won't get too hot until it's heated the rest of this up to get this side hot. It steals heat very quickly. So you gotta heat the whole thing up to a certain temperature before then focusing it on the front to get that the hottest point. Solder will wanna to flow towards the heat. So where you point the heat is where you want it to go. So once we've heated our ring up like around so, I can start seeing it get a bit red. We come around the front and start focusing it there. Then you should see the solder liquefy and jump into that gap there it goes and you can see it coming down so now I'm going to add a little bit more not sure where a bit went so grab another bit And again, on with the heat. Solder. Job done. Get that. Lift the lid on that. Take this and just what I'll do is I'll face it like that and I'll show you. Don't try this at home, maybe. I don't know. I do this though, because it reacts quicker since I've got cold. Anyway. And just drop it in. Let it sit in the pickle. Um I might have to pause because this is where we wait. Uh, I suppose we come over here, something to look at um, would be setting up here for the next stretch, step. So what do we got? Don't need the roller, don't need the saw. Start tidying up our tools a bit, knocking stuff down. That's great, we really need that grit everywhere. <laughs> Tidy up your workshop, Phil. I'm trying to right now. <laughs> so yeah, just put a couple of things to the side over here. We're gonna need our mandrel, a file. We don't need this silver anymore. I can go back down there. So I might just quickly plug this back in. Keep the battery going. Won't need that yet. Or that. Um, I think we're about there so i don't need to let this really soak too long in the um solution i didn't really make a mess it's just cleaning up a bit and we're going to file it back anyway so it's going to have a whole new brand new surface to the one that was there um 
yeah, just give us a couple of secs. I will pause here. Um, just so you know, even though the camera won't move and you won't have known, I'll just be honest and say, yep, I'll be back in a sec. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'll bring you back over here and we will stare at this. Oh, it does its thing. That way I'll fast lap it. Okay, I think that's about done. Done good enough anyway for now. So, from there, let's go down here. You can see the acid. Let's see if we can get a close up of this. How acidic it is. It's not super acidic, but this is the same bicarb I put sulfuric acid in and um, neutralized it. So, here we go. You can see all the bubbles from off the tongs. That's um, bicarb reacting with the acid, turning into a gas. Shake it off. Now I've got to rinse these tongs. <laughs> got a bad habit of sticking them straight back into the. Uh... Into the acid and slowly neutralizing my acid. So there we go. Put this here. Uh, now the fun begins. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get this back into a round shape. And that's where this will come in handy. And of course, hang on a sec. And of course, one more thing I didn't mention. One of these. So I'll zoom right out here for a sec. So anyway. I just stick that in there, give it a stretch. Hmm, seems very rigid. Might just go give this an annealing. Two seconds, sorry. Oh, I don't, I don't want to pause. I want you to see it all done in one hit. So I'll just speed it up. Okay, I'll try that again. We shouldn't do it with these pliers. No, it just wants to slip. All right, we're gonna beat it into shape. And what we wanna do is where it sticks out, push that up against here and force it into that round and slowly work our way down. Any frustrations? Here's the time. Watch your fingers. Now I'm pulling down with this finger while hitting the lump section. You can slowly bring it down the mandrel as you're hitting it. Oops, sorry about that. Slowly making its way down. We're at an O. <laughs> P Q R S. Getting there. This is where you find out how good that measurement system was. Might just quickly get another annealing.
quickly run this around. Just in case there is any little bits of grit from the uh, flux. Put him back on the mandrel. Angle that up a bit more. Now I've just turned it over. because this is conical shaped. So it's thinner this side than this side. And so I've got to make sure that both rims are beaten against this wider side. And so we're at R and a half at the moment. So again, through all the beating this has just copped, I've undone the uh, annealing effect. So we're gonna have to keep swapping backwards and forwards a bit, just because of the thickness of this as well. So, got it to R and a half. And I'm going to allow for the amount that's going to be taken off in the polishing stage. And I can check it again then. So, just going to knock this off. And this is where we pull out the file and do a bit of sanding. So, um, sorry, filing. I'm going to grab this half now. And just go through filing so I'll fast like this. Okay, here's where, it doesn't seem like much, but every time I do this, that little pile adds up. Now, sometimes you get your bench set up and you got a little um, attachment under it, but I haven't set myself up that well. <laughs> I just do what I do anyway. Um, so that's that, that's just the scrap, ready for melting back down. Now, what I've done on the inside, started on it, got that mark where the uh, join is, and started getting that out, it's pretty well out, and the 400 will do some damage to it as well and get rid of it. But I'm gonna go and, here's the next thing, make sure I get a stamp on it. Well, because sometimes I get to the end <laughs> and I've forgotten to stamp it. I'm just going to squeeze over here. Make some noise, watch your ears. Yeah, that's my little, uh, tiny little anvil. That's the gem cuts. And get this straight up straight without falling over. Shh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Something went bang, I'll find it later. So anyway, grab our hammer. Now these are handy with this little notch out of it rather than a straight one, because it can reach around the uh, band and get your stamp in there. So for the purposes of this, I'm not gonna put it down near the join end. And I'll point that out later when I continue on with this ring. It's gonna go down opposite, but that's also gonna let me know exactly where that join was once I try and make it disappear. So, again, watch your ears. Put that right in the center of my band. Actually, I'm not gonna do that there. Let's put it over here on this. What am I thinking? So this is softer timber. That way I don't dent the outside of my ring. What was I thinking? Flat sheet I can do on there, not a problem. So, let's see if I can get a better angle. 
Let's move it that way. Get that right in the center. Sorry, just getting the camera right. So it's right in the center, right opposite this join. I'm trying not to smash the camera when I do this. One sharp blow. Then I'm gonna rock it left and right because the contour of the inside, it doesn't sink right in properly in the first place. But always make sure it hasn't jumped out of the uh, mark, out of the same spot, otherwise you're getting double stamps everywhere. So hopefully now we have a very well printed 925 there. It'll show up better once it's soldered. There you go, it's up that way. 9T5, uh, sorry, once it's polished, you'll see it better. So that's also deep enough to withstand having a surface removed and still remain there once I polish the inside of this, which is important. Oh, Jesus, make enough noise, fella. Oh, well. So, outside of the ring next. So I'll probably just fast forward this again. Just gonna go around with the file. I'll start at the join. Right file, nice flat one. Okay, as you can see, the join is still a bit visible with that notch there. But across here has disappeared, which is what you want. And I'll tidy that up more of the inside after. That's the main part, getting that settled. It was a tiny little bit out. I had to come down and touch in the um, one side than the other, but blended well. So I'll go around it, finish it off. Okay, there we have it, all uh, filed up. Look, the brushed steel, look, brushed metal, look, finished. No, I'm joking. <laughs> okay, um, so from here, um, you know how to polish opal? <laughs> you know how to polish silver. It's just, um, you know, if necessary, cork block. Damn it. Point five. Oh, come on. Right, let me go down. All right, we'll do that. I'm trying to zoom out. Sorry, guys. No, it won't let me. All right. Cook block. And starting with the 400 grit. All you got to do, go around the outside and give it a 400 finish as opposed to the brush metal look. And have you done your job correctly with the previous filing, it should come up quite nice. And then you go down to the next grade. So I've got to get all the way around. For time's sake, I'm going to do it by the Dremel. So get my bit, swap the uh, size of the mandrel, try to. Grab that and that. It's 
So this is just that piece I made out of a uh, worn out one of these. Once it was used and spent, yeah, just use a mandrel and use my uh, saw that you saw before, the wire saw, and just cut a slot down the center. So then we we'll use that. Now I don't need to make these into a little point. I'm not doing detail today. So got a pair of them, just get a little tighten. I'm going to grab the 400, pair of scissors, cut a strip, just like that, so that when folded, it's the width of the inside of the band. I'm just going to push that into its new home, center it, push down, give it a bit of a start twist so it doesn't fly out. And here comes some noise, so I'll fast forward this bit. Okay, so that was all the way up through to the 1500. So from here on in, polish tips. So I'm just gonna quickly, this is live, we recorded. Gonna have to get rid of this dust from the filings before. Collect those. Put that up there, not to get scratched. And after now, swap over. These again. Now, these have a little wide neck at the top, so to me, that acts like a stop. I'll put it all the way down to that. Lower you can get your piece without being impractical. Um, the more sturdy it will be, especially when you're pushing on it at all, because um, it will put it off center and we're in the middle of working. So this will be where the polish starts happening. We've got this next one, and we're all done here. So I'm just going to go dab this on there when it's on. Start working it around like I did with the sandpaper. <laughs> all clean my hands are clean no cross contaminations of the polishes because this will be the final polish this one so I'll get this wax right out of the way so I don't want to touch that anywhere near you Whack that in there Lighten. and this time we'll be using a rouge dialux so a little bit of this and we go <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay. So, hmm. Just gonna get a bit of water. A bit of cloth. I'm just gonna clean this off my hands. It's a bit wet. And a bit of white. So this should probably use one of these. They're a bit more friendly. And that's it, folks. <laughs> it's a silver ring. Silver is, sterling silver ring has come. Let's give us a shop bought, I'd say. <laughs> Let's see why not, but it's handmade, this one. 100% handmade, except for the uh, drawing of the half round. Um, well, as soon as I rub something that's not polished on it, it loses it. But anyway, there's our market survived. Nine, two, five. So yeah, that's how you make a silver ring, and that's that's with all the tools I showed you. Uh, obviously, safety goggles. <laughs> if you're asthmatic, just be careful around the flux fumes. Maybe make sure. Obviously, you're gonna have to have it well ventilated while you're soldering. But other than that, have at it. It's that. I don't want to say easy. It's a lot of care. Take your time. Make sure you get a better finish than I probably even did with this one. But this ain't finished. Ain't finished. This is not finished. So the um, point of this video, there you go, silversmithing video. Hope that helps. And from here, opposite my mark, I said, should be my join. <clears throat> Keeping that at the base, I intend to cut out, keep it right way up for the camera I'm facing off the side. I'm gonna cut out, say that much, and a setting is gonna go in there instead. So this is how we start off with a ring. That way, all I do is cut it out, nice and neat. Have a setting ready that goes straight in. Resolder it. Don't have to touch the ring. Just give it another repolish once you've soldered it. Clean up your solder marks and so forth. So that'll be, yeah, and maybe another video. So anyway, I'll include in the links a couple of these things like the sizing charts and all that sort of stuff. Um, I know this, this is probably about one of the only videos. <laughs> I'm ever going to do that doesn't actually contain opal as such, but still, why not? That's where I get my Lightning Ridge stuff. Uh, I've bought off eBay otherwise, but that was years ago. Now I'll just go to him. Uh, there are other places, don't get me wrong. Just saying, I get asked a lot, where do I get my material from Lightning Ridge? There you go. And a lot of these tools I got, other than buying in Adelaide at uh, Twin Plaza Metals, there's another one I'll include in the link. Um, as well as there's also Adelaide um, Jewellery Supplies, which is Jewellery Supplies Australia. It's just Adelaide Jewellery Supplies, AJS, but there's obviously Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne. I think Perth has one too. Um, but I'll, I'll put a bunch of links in the description for this one. But that's where I get mine, from my lapidary machine to my soldering and silversmithing needs. One stop shop. So, again, there we go. That's as easy as it is to start solder, uh, silversmithing um, and just making a simple ring. Again, if you just want to make um, settings for your jewellery that doesn't really require the mandrel, uh, a lot of the other stuff you will be needing, but also different shapes silver. But start off with a ring and get used to the nature of the beast. And from there you'll go, oh, okay, if I can do this, that and the other with this, when I do it to that, just take into account it's a lot thinner, it's a lot thicker. You know, um, making sure you anneal things. Uh, just be delicate with the delicate things. And um, yeah, when you progress, you'll get onto understanding why there's more than one type of solder. So when you start doing a build up, uh, unless you can jigsaw it together nicely to have it all in hard solder, which I like to do, then you can move to medium and soft. So anyway, that's another lesson for another day. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Oh, hang on, let's not go yet. Jump on the gun. Da, 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 da. Where are we? Yes. Do, 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 do. Oops, bit of a jetty mark there. That's going to be R. Uh, 
hour and a half. Could push that down a little bit more. Don't want to scratch the inside too much. Um, I reckon that would be that 0.1. <laughs> and a little bit more stretching, I would have got it to S. But I don't care, because um, if this was for me, um, I'm sure I can find a finger that fits on. There we go. Won't leave it there. It's all tight now. Oh, great. Now I won't get it off. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> there you go. I'll just leave that there. Awesome ring. So um, if you're interested in doing that sort of thing, definitely join a club. They can help you. They'll have a lot of everything you need anyway. And you could probably get something like this done within at least two lessons. Uh, we do ours for three hours. Um, I'm not going to get some soap on that. <laughs> Shouldn't have put it on, Phil. Um, if you see this on the next video, you'll know why. <laughs> soap didn't work. Ah, uh, no. Um, so yeah, and, and then I'm going to add this uh, a, a setting to this and move on. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to stop playing around and leave you to it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.